With the ongoing national health emergency and the continual rise of COVID-19 cases, our group has proposed a project entitled In Silico Screening of Traditional Medicinal Plants and Compounds Found in Camarinesur and Albay as Potential SARS-CoV-2 Inhibitors. This research project hopes to contribute to the betterment of the national situation and add to the knowledge base of the virus, branching out to the fields of biology and chemistry. Following the significance of this study, the study also specifically aims to 1. To review previously published journals, periodicals, textbooks, and database websites to cross-check effective antiviral bioactive compounds present in Camarinesur and Albay. 2. To test the compatibility of the compounds with the physiology of the human body by implementing an absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion assays. 3. To implement a pathway enrichment analysis or molecular docking of the orally observable compounds in SARS-CoV-2 protein using an online protein-protein interaction analysis server string. 4. To assemble a comprehensive platform of in silico proposed potential SARS-CoV-2 inhibitor, Materia Medica, and compounds found in Camarinesur and Albay, Bicol Region, Philippines, in tabulated or catalog form. These objectives served as the backbone for the creation of a detailed methodology process. We, without knowing what to accomplish, we wouldn't be able to understand what strategies we needed to undertake. After careful proposition and review of existing related literature, the researchers are now at the methodology phase. We use Zhang and colleagues' methodology as our keynote reference for our own. This presentation aims to review and report the current progress of the researchers concerning the methodology and assess the project's feasibility to be pursued this academic year. Indicated in this specific slide is Process 1, Literature Search and its Manageable Tasks. These tasks are to be undertaken so that we would be able to obtain the expected output, a list of antiviral compounds, which would satisfy the first objective. Observable indicators that stimulate that we accomplish the first goal are as follows. Downloaded previous research studies, literature resources, and other notes. Our process to add me screening and its tasks are shown in this slide. Similarly, these tasks will be accomplished to complete the expected output, list of add me past antiviral compounds to indicate that this second goal has been achieved. Screenshots of the ADMI screening results, including graphical representation, property values, and other information given in the filtering software used, and a downloaded spreadsheet showing all these, will be presented as proof of our accomplishment. This slide then shows Process 3, which is molecular docking and its corresponding tasks. After this process, the researchers are expected to present a rough list of what compounds have shown promising inhibition values vis-a-vis -vis exhibited virus protein, which would be indicated by screenshots of the molecular docking illustrations that demonstrate protein compound interaction and other supporting evidence that this process has been executed properly up to the end. Data analysis as the fourth and final process is displayed on this slide. A polished tabulation of the compounds that have passed the molecular docking process, what native plants they can be extracted from, and what geographical region can these be found within Camarines or Albay are the expected outputs for this process that would signify the accomplishment of the last objective. Pictures of each native plant where studied compounds can be found and other graphical illustrations comparing the level of inhibition of all subjective compounds would also contribute to the indication of this objective completion. Moving on, to better plan and execute our methodology, here is a virtual representation of our methodology in the form of a Gantt chart. In this slide, we can see the earliest possible schedule and critical paths of each task for Objective 1. The initial plan was to accomplish task 1 to 4 in 10 days. However, as you can observe from the chart, there was a disproportionate gap between the actual efforts and the initial plan. This can be attributed to unprecedented challenges, such as the vast amount of literature resources needed to be reviewed, lack of pre-established table format, uncertainties in the procedures to be followed, and intermittent internet connection. 
As researchers, we intervened with this risk. A point person was assigned to exhaust available databases, literature, and related resources. The group also decided to solely include row titles that correspond to two data categories. One, name of compound, and two, name of the plant where it is found to simplify the tabulation process. The researchers deliberately indicated three methods that can be used to exhaust the resources. The said methods have the same individual steps but only differ in terms of the procedural arrangement thereof. The researchers have also agreed to install the software wherever and whenever convenient, depending on the circumstances present to each individual. Due to these efforts, before the end of last school year, we were able to satisfy the first objective, and thus, completing the first main process of our methodology. Proofs of our actual accomplishments will be shown in the preceding slides. Figure 1 essentially shows our most raw list of compounds deemed potentially antiviral from the literature and studies we scrutinized and checked beforehand. On the other hand, Figure 2 enumerates the most promising compounds, which are paradigmatic to various compound groups. We have cherry-picked those that contain the most substantial evidence provided in the studies collected. Initially, we had a list of 10, but we have added two more compounds to substitute any of which that can be filtered out of the processes we have indicated. For our most, this includes the geographical availability of the compound. Let us proceed to the slides which also contain figures which are essential in chronicling our progress. Figure G is a table showing the actual list of compounds subjected to the following process, the admin screening. Notice that this figure contained more compounds than ever. This is because we wanted to maximize the number of compounds that can be subjected to the molecular docking since the admin screening in itself can be strictly filtering too. We also number the compounds according to the order they were recorded or noted. In all these listings, it is more than warranted that we maintain reasonable control and information where we have extracted it from. Because of this, the document in Figure 4 explicitly lists what plants the corresponding compounds are from. For the second objective, the initial plan was to finish the whole admin screening process from the retrieval of the compound's canonical smiles to the tabulation of screened compounds in a span of 5 days only. This was rather an underestimate of the actual time slot needed for the said procedures. Although the progress scan chart shows that tasks 5 to 7 were accomplished in only a span of 2 days, these tasks are still ongoing and are planned to be continued this school year 2021 to 2022. Like process 1, we also encounter difficulties in this process. PubChem, an online database for chemical compounds, did not have available and obtainable canonical smiles for some of our initially listed compounds. To ensure that all listed compounds would yield quantifiable results in the ADMI screening, the group has unanimously decided to replace the initially recorded compound. Swapping compounds that have obtainable canonical smiles with those that do not avoids the challenge of having to deal with desolate ADMI results. The group has discussed and planned beforehand to conduct the ADMI screening at a convenient time frame, when all are available and all do not concurrently experience an intermittent internet connection, to resolve the risk of slow ADMI screening due to connection issues. Additionally, the analysis from the ADMI screening was still unclear to us. Although there were quantifiable results, we didn't know how to expect the given parameters and values correctly. Hence, as a group, with the advice and urge of our grade 11 research teacher, we decided to consult a professional in the related field. Figure 5 in this slide gives you a glimpse of the compound's canonical smiles which were subjected to the ADMI data extraction. The canonical smiles were obtained from the free data source, PubChem, and were subjected to Swiss ADMI. These smile strings signified a compound's identity, which was recognized by the ADMI screening platform. Figure 6 lists the 5 compounds which are replaced with new compounds. The removal is chiefly concerned with the absence of its information in the utilized data server. 
Figure 7 of this slide represents only two of the screenshots from the ADMI screenings results through the Swiss ADMI website. They contain a comprehensive and clear list of all the values and graphical representations of the results of the ADMI screening. Meanwhile, Figure 8 is the tabulated form of the results in Figure 7. The Excel file allows us to organize the values into their respective properties. Figure 9 provides us with a visual representation of the outcome of the ADMI subtracted compounds. Red means the value did not fit within the given value interval. Green means it fits and it passed. Meanwhile, yellow indicates that it did not range within the interval, but it still is distinctively justifiable. As mentioned earlier, there is still an ambiguity in the results of the ADMI screening. Hence, here comes the decision to consult with a more educated professional. Following the decision, Figure 10 are screenshots showing the letter drafts we have accomplished so far that will be directed to the experts and the campus director from whom we will request help. On objectives that are yet to be accomplished until now, we had narrowed down before the end of the last academic year the dates when the remaining tasks could have been conducted according to the last year's academic calendar. This initial Gantt chart plan for Objective 3 explicitly demonstrates how we distributed tasks T09 to T12 for over 19 days in the month of May, roughly from 2 to 20. On this one, on the other hand, the tasks T13 to T16 falling under Objective 4 were spread in the succeeding three days of the same month, from 21 to 23. Goals for the next cycle as we have not completed our methodology last academic year, we have established our task goals to satisfy the last two objectives of our study. The ultimate reason for our delays and disproportionate backlogs, as shown by our side-by-side -side comparison of CAD charts, is the unprecedented challenges we needed to address before we proceeded with the succeeding steps. Hence, so that we avoid encountering the same mishaps, we have prepared a rundown list of the anticipated risks for the remaining task, as well as our plans on how to intervene if ever these prospects arise. In the aspect of incomplete databases from where compound structures would be retrieved, the researchers may plan to create their own 3D structures using free chemistry software that allows for the making of 3D structures based on IUPAC nomenclature. The molecular docking technology is unfamiliar to us researchers. Hence, we may encounter some difficulties in running our molecular docking step, as well as analyzing the results of our post-molecular docking strategies. We, as a group, decided to, that we would stick with Shaquille's manual for us to easily learn to navigate through the molecular docking software. Furthermore, we would also consult existing related literature as our reference on how to correctly analyze the molecule interactions and their quantified results. This slide enumerates the references of our study.